Hello, grade 12 students. Good morning. Welcome to module 1, lesson 1 and 2 of quarter 2 for creative writing. This is Amor K. Salas, your teacher for today. This lesson is tailored towards achieving the following competencies. First, identify the various elements, technique, and literary devices in drama. And second, understand intertextuality as a technique of drama. Are you now ready for our lesson? This time, I want you to get your pen and your study notebook and let us answer this activity. Match the concepts with its description. Write only the letter of the correct answer. This time, let us check if all your answers are correct. Congratulations! I believe you are now ready for the first lesson. Lesson 1. It's about elements, techniques, and literary devices in drama. The dramatic structure. How the structure is utilized by the playwright is dependent on various factors. Among these are, first, the length of the play. Second, the intended audience. Third, the use of dramatic elements. Fourth, the setting. And fifth, the genre of the play. Aristotle's Six Elements of Drama Aristotle was a Greek philosopher whose influence still influences us today. He was the first to write about the essential elements of drama more than 2,000 years ago. Aristotle considered the six elements in achieving good drama. Plot, this is what happens in the play. Plot refers to the action. The basic storyline in the play. Theme. While plot refers to the action of the play, theme refers to the meaning of the play. Theme is the main idea or lesson to be learned from the play. In some cases, the theme of a play is obvious. Other time, is quite subtle. Characters. Characters are the people sometimes animals or ideas portrayed by the actors in the play. It is the characters who move the story or plot of the play forward. Dialogue. This refers to the words written by the playwright and spoken by the characters in the play. The dialogue helps move the action of the play. Music or rhythm. While music is often featured in drama, in this case, Aristotle was referring to the rhythm of the actors' voices as they speak. Spectacle. This refers to the visual elements of a play. Set, costumes, special effects, etc. Spectacle is everything that the audience sees as they watch the play. The Modern Theater In the modern theater, the lease is changed slightly, although you will notice that many of the elements remain the same. 
The first four, character, plot, theme, and dialogue remain the same. But the following additions are now also considered essential elements of drama. Convention These are the techniques and methods used by the playwright and director to create the desired stylistic effect. Genre Genre refers to the type of play. Some examples of different genres include comedy, tragedy, mystery, and historical play. Audience. This is the group of people who watch the play. Many playwrights and actors consider the audience to be the most important element of drama, as all the effort put into writing and producing a play is for the enjoyment of the audience. Other literary elements include language. In drama, the particular manner of verbal expression, the diction or style of writing, or the speech or phrasing that suggests a class or profession or type of character. Style. The shaping of dramatic material, settings, or costumes in a deliberately non-realistic manner. Soliloquy. A speech by a single actor who is alone on stage. Monologue. A long speech made by one actor. A monologue may be delivered alone or in the presence of others. Technical Elements Scenery or set The theatrical equipment, such as curtains, flats, backdrops, or platforms, used in a dramatic production to communicate environment. Costumes Clothing and accessories worn by the actors to portray character and period. Props Short for properties. Any article, except costume or scenery, used as part of a dramatic production. Any movable object that appears on stage during a performance, from a telephone or train. Other technical elements. Lights. The placement, intensity, and color of lights to help communicative environment, mood, or feeling. Sound. The effects an audience hears during performance to communicate character, context, or environment. Makeup. Costumes, wigs, and body paint used to transform an actor into character. Aside from technical elements, drama also includes performance elements. This includes acting, use of face, body, and voice to portray character. Character motivation, the reason or reasons for character's behavior. An incentive or inducement for further action for character. Character analysis, and responding to dramatic art, the process or examining how the elements of drama, literary, technical, and performance are used. Empathy, the capacity to relate to the feelings of another. Other performance elements include speaking, the mood of expression or delivery of lines, breath control, proper use of the lungs and diaphragm muscle for maximum capacity and efficiency of breath or speaking, vocal expression, how an actor uses his or her voice to convey character, inflection, Change in pitch or loudness of the voice. Projection. How well the voice carries to the audience. Speaking style. The mode of expression or delivery of lines. Diction. Selection of pronunciation of words. Clarity of speech. Nonverbal expression includes gestures. Any movement of the actor's head, shoulder, arm, hand, leg, or foot to convey meaning, and facial expression, physical and vocal aspects used by an actor to convey mood, feeling, or personality. Now, let us have lesson two. 
understand intertextuality as a technique of drama. Do you sometimes borrow phrases and concepts from other work and integrate it to your own? If yes, then you're using intertextuality, perhaps even without knowing it. Intertextuality denotes the way in which texts, any texts, not just literature, gain meaning through the referencing or evocation of another text. The definition of intertextuality was created by the French semiotican Julia Cristeva in the 1960s. She created a term from the Latin word intertexto, which means to intermingle while waving. Cristeva argued that all works of literature being produced contemporarily are intertextual with the works that came before it. As she stated, any text, she argues, is constructed of a mosaic of quotations. Any text is the absorption and transformation of another. Texts that are referenced in intertextuality can be implicit. That's when the composer alludes to another text through ideas, symbols, genre, or style. On the other hand, it can also be referenced explicitly. When the composer directly mentions quotes or references another text in their work, composers refer to specific texts to help shape meaning because all texts portray particular perspective on issues or messages, so it helps in enriching and extending a message. There are different types of intertextuality. All of them refer to text in different ways to produce and shape meaning. The first one, allusion. A subtle or indirect reference to another historical period of religious belief. Example, T.S. Eliot mentions celestial rose in his poem, Hallow Me. This rose comes from Dante's Paradiso. This is an allusion because he did not mention the composer. Another type of intertextuality is called parody. It is an imitation of another text for satirical purpose, usually to mock. Example, in 1984, George Orwell had Winston read the political tract the Theory and Practice of Oligarchical Collectivism, which is a parody of the communist revolutionist Leon Trotsky's writing. Adaptation is the third type of intertextuality. It is a film, TV drama, or stage play that is based on a written work. Example, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series has a film adaptation. To further understand intertextuality, a famous example of it in literature is James Joyce's Ulysses as a retelling of the Odyssey. Set in Dublin, Ernest Hemingway used the language of the metaphysical poet John Donne in naming his novel For Whom the Bell Tolls. Even the Bible is considered an instance of intertextuality since the New Testament quotes passages from the Old Testament. After all, to the well-organized mind, death is but the next great adventure. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling In a moment of subtle intertextuality, the mentor figure of Dumbledore tells Harry Potter not to pity a dying wizard. The wizard in question has been living for hundreds of years due to the sorcery stone and is not afraid of death. J.K. Rowling is hinting back at the line in James Barry's Peter Pan, who once uttered, to die would be an awfully big adventure. There are themes in common between these two fantasy stories at Harry Potter and Peter Pan. 
Yet, the reader does not need to pick up on the influence to J.M. Barry's work to appreciate J.K. Rowling's work. J.K. Rowling also borrowed from other sources such as from G.R.L. Tolkien's Lord of the Ring trilogy and from the horrors of the real-life Nazi Germany. Yet, once again, the reader can appreciate the story without thinking about its influence. By studying all these concepts, I believe you can now answer the first task. Let's create. Think about three of the most unforgettable characters you have encountered in a film, books, or any narrative you have heard about. Create your top three characters and illustrate each of their personality using the table below. The next task is called, Let Us Set It Up. Think about a place where these three characters are best suited. This will serve as your setting in your upcoming one-act play. Please apply the things we have learned about vivid writing in writing a description. After creating a setting for your characters, create a progressive title of the drama you have in mind. Let us always remember that playwriting is an exciting discipline in the performing arts. You have to be observant about how people converse with each other, how to develop an active storyline, how to create effective dialogues, and how to illustrate full-dimensional characters, and how to bring the story to a substantial close. To further know about the other elements of drama, prepare yourself for lessons 3 and 4. See you! Thank you and have fun learning. Mabuhay!